Hi, my name is Lindsay Monday, head coach at USC, and you're watching Lacrosse Magazine. Today we're going to be focusing on one of my favorite aspects of the game, stick work. We're going to be showing you two different drills that you can do with your team, no matter what level, uh, to improve your player's stick work. The first drill we're going to show you is what we like to call pattern passing. We're going to start at the most basic level, so no matter what level that you're coaching, you can incorporate this into your practices. So what we like to do is use five players per group. And again, at the most basic level, you're just going to start with one ball. So what you're going to have your players do is find a pattern that works for them. They can all start with the stick in their strong hand, and they're going to find that pattern. When you're finding your pattern in this drill, it's important to pass and receive to people who are not directly next to you. It'll be a lot easier and be able to add more balls into this progression if I receive a pass from someone across from me or diagonal. We're not going to be able to pass to people directly to my right or to my left. So a lot of times we're working on a diagonal. You can think of it um, sort of like the star drill where I'm going across from me and we're in a sort of star-like pattern. As the players get more developed and more advanced, you can continue to add the number of lacrosse balls that you add into the drill. So as they get the pattern down, the player that started the pattern is going to pick up the next ball and add in a second. So right now we'll have five players and two lacrosse balls going. Again, as the players get more and more comfortable, that player who started the progression will add in a third ball. So right now we have five players with three balls. They're all working on their strong hand. They're all working on quick sticks in order to increase the speed and increase the difficulty of this drill. The key to this is looking at the person you are receiving the ball from. If I get caught turning my head from side to side, it's going to slow the drill down and it's going to make things very difficult. And the absolute key is looking at the player who you're receiving from, you should be able to see the person you're passing to out of your peripheral vision. Not only are we look, working on stick work, we're also working on a little bit of vision and feeding as well. As your players are comfortable working with the three balls with their five players, we want to continue to increase the difficulty and try to challenge our players. So what we're going to do is stop the drill and have your players pick up four balls. So we'll have four balls and five players. As we get more advanced, um, with the number of balls that we're using, it is extremely important to focus on the timing. So you're gonna have your players count off and make sure they're on the same page before they start this. It's also important that the speed of which they're throwing and catching is all in sync. We're not gonna be able to have one person passing the ball extremely hard and one having a loopy pass because the timing is gonna be extremely difficult. So again, now we're at four balls with five people. As we increase the number of balls and the difficulty of this drill, it's more and more imperative that your players are not looking from side to side when they're trying to get better and better at this. They need to be looking at the person they're receiving from and having that player in their peripheral vision to pass the ball to. So the last step of this is adding five balls for five players. Every single player is going to start with a ball and they're going to try to pass and throw in unison. This is extremely, extremely difficult and absolutely okay for them to mess up time and time again. The point is not for them to do this for five minutes straight without a mistake. The point is really just working on stick work, on timing, on communication. So when we start with five balls and five players, they have to count off one, two, three before they start and make sure that they're all on the exact same page and on the exact same speed. Another progression of this drill is to have your players reverse the direction of the ball. So again, we're gonna start off on the very basic level of one ball. So your players are gonna go back to finding their pattern with one ball and on the whistle, they're gonna reverse directions. So I am now going to receive the ball from the person I passed to and vice versa. As your players get more and more comfortable with this, you can still add two balls and then three balls and continue to add in the reverse. It's important that they make sure that they're on the same page with their timing and their communication. The two other things that we're gonna show you with this drill is working some behind the backs as well as utilizing the back of our stick, again, to increase the difficulty. So depending on the player that you coach or the level that you coach, you can add some advanced stick work as you progress. When we coach stick work here at USC, we like to create a little bit of chaos and a little bit of craziness to try to make it as game-like as possible. So the next drill we're gonna show you is something that we call circle stick work. The center circle is the place that we like to do our circle stick work. It makes a lot of sense um, and it's an easy setup. So what we started with was four lines and two balls. It's just a simple shuttle where you're working with a line across from you and replacing them. So we started off and we had four lines going with two balls. As we increase the difficulty and we increase the chaos, 
we add in four balls with eight lines. So again, you're working with the people across from you, whether it's at a diagonal or straight across, and all you're doing is switching lines. So again, a basic stick work shuttle, but we're adding a lot of chaos in the middle where your players have to be aware, have to have their heads up, and have to listen to the commands that we're calling out. So we can start with strong hand, we can go to our weak hand, ground balls, we can work the back of our stick. There's a number of different things you can do to increase the intensity and increase the difficulty of this, but the more chaos you can have in the middle, the better off you're gonna be, and the more, the more difficult it's gonna be for your players to have their heads up, to be able to sort of dodge around. You know, you're not only working stick work, you're working vision, you're working your head being up, you're also working a little bit of footwork to make sure you're not running in and colliding with one another. So it's important to start off slow and to um, decrease the craziness, but as your players get better and you get more comfortable, you can certainly add in the stick work and add in the craziness to make it a little chaotic. At USC, we like to do a lot of stick work with our players, but I think it's really important to try all different kinds of stick work um, with your players. So you can start with the most basic where you stand and make your players understand the basic concepts and the basic skills that are necessary for it, but we play a very, very fast-paced game, so it's important to show them and progress them through standing stick work to sort of jogging stick work and then fast-paced, high-intensity moving stick work to simulate as much game-like as possible. We like to do as much as we can here and challenge our players in every way possible. And you know, we like to teach our players a lot of crazy stick work, a lot of fancy, fun, you know, behind the backs, around the world stick tricks. But in all reality, you're probably not going to do those things in a game, if at all. You know, I teach that stuff all the time as a player. I didn't generally do that many fancy um, things with my stick, but having a stick in your hand, being able to do all of these things are only gonna help you with your regular strong side righty or lefty catch. So the more that you can do with your stick, the better off you're gonna be in a normal, regular game-like situation. So I hope you enjoyed these two drills that we showed you today. If you do happen to use them within your given practices, you can always tag Lacrosse Magazine and maybe give a shout out to USC Lacrosse as well. But you can tag Lacrosse Magazine. Best of luck to all of you this season and fight on. And I really have no regrets coming out here, and it's just a choice that I'm really happy I made. Because if you were going to ask me freshman or sophomore year of high school uh, before I made that decision, if I would ever think about going somewhere a plane right away, and I would have said no to you. So I'm just super happy I made that um, choice.